beautiful. I like it. It's all twisty and wavy and tuby and awesome. Now it's time to move on to some torque magic. Let's build an anti reversion chamber. We're going to do a little experiment. We're going to add an anti-reversion chamber at the end of our header. So I'm going to take these transition cones, the vibrant cells, and I'm going to expand this end here so that it'll slip over my two inch tube there. Now the outlet of my collector is also two inch. So I'm going to weld this to the end of that collector and then this is going to slip over it as an assembly. It'll be all welded together. So it'll be coming inside to this chamber. So the, what that does is it prevents the uh, pulse waves in a naturally aspirated engine from reverting back to the valve. So it's gonna help uh, increase exhaust flow and make torque hopefully. I just need that and that because I want to expand that so it slips over top of that tube. On my anti-reversion chamber, I need my two inch tubing to go inside the inlet of my cone. So I need to expand it on the swager. So I want the length of this tube. This is actually going to go on here like that. About there, that tube is going to get welded to it and then the other two pieces will be added behind it. This I'm going to shorten a little bit though. I proceed to tack weld my two transition cones together. Once tack welded together, I mock up the chamber on the car and mark it where it needs to be welded. So I pulled the collector out of the car now. I'm ready to put this all together. This is tack welded together as well. So to weld this together, I need to do this weld first, but I want to do it so that I can slip this back up that way. Um, if I were to weld this like that without this piece, I'm not going to be able to get it past my weld there, right? So, plan ahead. Oh, that turned out so good. Mm, so good. Too bad you'll never get to see it. Except right now. Let's test fit this baby. So this is our Jesse cat. Uh, obviously we don't want it to sit there because that's kind of low. So we want to kind of tuck it up a little bit closer to the drive shaft there. So to do that, I got to make a little uh, jog in the tubing there. And I'm going to do that with this piece of uh, leftover bend from another project. And I'm going to mark where I need to make it cut to make it bend up off of that flange. And then I'm going to cut it so that there's a, an even point between this face and this face up here. So I'm going to eyeball basically where I want to cut this. So that's going to sit up there like that. This is going to come out and bend up this way. And it's going to be probably be somewhere around there. So this is just a scrap piece. So if it doesn't turn out, I can cut another piece. I'll be left with some, some bend there. I've got a 60 degree bend and I've got a long piece of straight with a little bend that I added on the end. The 60 degree bend is going to go over our rear subframe here. 
and then our straight is gonna go into the flex and that's gonna hopefully line up somewhere somewhere in there like that. But I want, I'm gonna wanna add a flange joint, I think, at right at this point or somewhere close to it because I need to be able to fish this end over it and I don't wanna have it too long because otherwise I won't be able to to feed this pipe through to make that connection. So I think that's probably a pretty good spot for it, right, right between there. So I might have to cut this leg a little bit shorter on my 60, but I think that should work. This is my this is my mock-up nut. This is my final installation nut. All I got to do to release is because I've only got it just a little bit tight, right, with that mock-up nut. But I only have to have it tight and loose enough to be able to pull that little latch off of that T-bolt, and it pops right apart. So that would obviously have to be cut shorter to to go up pull up tighter. I actually want it to sit further back this way even out underneath this part of the axle. So I'm ready to weld together my collector and our anti-reversion chamber here and our v-band here at the bottom now this is going to continue to the rest of the exhaust now what i've got here is this is a aluminum heat sink that i made i just took a big chunk of round aluminum put it on a lathe and cut that profile for my v-band and then i've got a, a groove on the on the inside for the that male ring to sit and then i'm going to clamp my this side is for three inch, this side is for two and a half. So I just clamp my flange onto that, perform that weld, and it's gonna draw the heat out of that flange as I weld. It's gonna prevent it from wanting to, to warp. Um, the male and, and female feature of our flanges helps create a seal, but it, even if that flange is warped, uh, it'll, it'll disrupt that, that mating surfaces, uh, and, and you may end up with a little bit of a leak in your flange. So having this heat sink when you weld it will help prevent that warping from happening. And I am back purging this. I'm gonna start at the top and work my way down. I'll do a little bit on each weld as I go and just continue until I get it done. Let's get started. So our torque magic has been added. We've got a flex and our Jesse cat, our mid pipes all mocked up. We've got to be able to hang this exhaust and put an axle back on it. So make sure you come back to the next episode, find out what happens. Oh, I see the things are jumping around there. The lines are going up and down. It's going dancing, I'm going dancing. I'm on hold for dancing, dancing. Make the bar dance. Oh, I hit a button.